Welcome back to Jay's Office Hours. Uh, last time we talked about world building and we're going to talk about it again today. Last time we talked about how to keep track of your world in a world bible and today we're going to discuss the two levels of world building. By that I mean the macro level world building and the micro level world building. And the difference between the two as I like to think about it is that macro is the forest and micro are the trees. Um, macro world building is um, the big picture culture and geography and um, customs of the world that you're creating. Um, and these really drive all of the micro level choices that you're going to make. But I like to think about it with the macro as if I'm going to uh, take a vacation to a place I've never been before. There are certain things I need to know going in. I need to know what the geography of the towns I want to visit is like. I want to know what the major laws there are that might affect me while I'm there. I want to know what the people are like. What are the what are the different um, races and cultures that I can expect to uh, be around. I want to know what languages they speak. I want to know what customs are um, important to know going in. Um, things like you know, if you go to certain countries, um, customs that we have in the U.S., for example, are considered offensive in other countries. So you'd want to know those before you go in. Uh, you want to know what kind of currency they use. You want to know what kind of food they eat. Um, sort of like if you were looking at a big picture guidebook of the place you want to visit, what are the things you would be looking for? Those are the decisions you need to make for your macro level world building. And I tend to make those before I sit down to write a word. Um, I'm not a plotter. I'm a world builder pretty much. And so that's my pre-work on a book is figuring out what is this world. And the reason you want to know the big picture is because the characters that you're writing about need to be a product of the world you create. And so if you're going to write somebody who's a product of the world, you need to know the forces that are molding them or the forces that they're rebelling against, these big picture things, including what they consider sacred and what they consider profane. And this will be reflected in their form of government. Are they a democracy, a theocracy, something else? Are they matriarchal or patriarchal or something in between? Um, their code of law, their cultural norms, what kind of holidays they celebrate, what kind of religions uh, people um, practice. Um, these are the big picture macro issues. On the other hand, we have the micro issue level things, which are the trees. And these are the elements that you would see once you are in this new place as a visitor, standing on the street looking around. You're going to notice the type of clothes people wear, the type, the color of things, the scent of things, the sound of things, how things feel. Um, you're going to notice how people interact with each other. You're going to notice how people are treated. You might notice more about the um, distinctions between the classes on the ground that you may not read about in literature before you go. Does that make sense? So the idea is that on the macro level, it's the stuff you're going to see when you're in the story. And a lot of that actually comes out while you're writing the story. But the important thing to remember is that the macro level details must always buttress or reflect in some way the larger picture of the world that you created. The types of clothes we wear reflect our attitudes towards what is, what is okay to show and what is not okay to show, right? The emblems that we wear, the type of, like, I wear a wedding ring, and that's a reflection of our culture, and it says something about my status in society as a wife, and that has meaning. So you need to think when you're adding these details in, what does it say about the larger picture of the culture? And that includes the type of language people use, the types of, what do they say when they hit their nail, their, um, their hammer, sorry, back up. What do they say when they hit their thumb with a hammer? What do they say um, when they love someone? You have to think about it at that level of detail. And the way that people put those phrases together says something about what they find important in the world. And so you really have to think that complexly about the world building choices that you make. Um, I know that that is a lot of work. I've done it many times. I've created lots of worlds. It can also be very fun work. 
Um, and I think that if you approach it from that level, you will um, do a lot of, you will accomplish a lot if you think about it in those ways. Micro, macro, macro, micro, forest trees, Think about it like a tourist first, and then think about it when it's if you're on the ground in this in the country or the planet. Also remember that worlds can be macro and micro. A macro world would be an entire alien planet. A micro world can be as small as a marriage or a friendship and the customs and rules inherent in those relationships. So think about it on both levels. I hope that's helpful to you. I hope that you enjoy world building if you're working on a new, new project. And as always, if you have questions, please leave it in comments and check out www.jwells.com for more information about my books and more craft articles. Thanks and happy writing.